Intel's historic collapse erases $8 billion from market value. Global beef demand is under pressure. Turkey alerts citizens of attack risk in the U.S. and Europe. Philippines to offer value-added tax refund to foreign tourists. Deadly New Zealand flood crisis extends to North Island. Protests across U.S. on deadly police beating of unarmed black man. CCP targets American kids by infiltrating K-12 schools. Japan firm opens well meat vending machines. Hello, I'm Jolie. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It is Monday, January 30th, and here are your top stories. Intel saw about a billion wiped off its market value last Friday after the U.S. chipmaker stumped Wall Street with dismal earnings projections, which fanned fears around a slump in the personal computer market. The company predicted a surprise loss for the first quarter, and its revenue forecast was $3 billion below estimates, as it also struggled with slowing growth in the data center business. And Intel shares closed 6.4 percent lower, while rival advanced micro devices and NVIDIA ended the session up 0.3 percent and 2.8 percent, respectively. Intel, which plans to cut $3 billion in costs this year, generated $7.7 billion in cash from operations in the fourth quarter and paid dividends of $1.5 billion. The poor outlook underscored the challenges facing CEO Pat Gelsinger as he tries to re-establish Intel's dominance in the sector by expanding semiconductor manufacturing and building new factories in the U.S. and Europe. Intel has been steadily losing market share to rivals like AMD, which has used contract chip makers such as Taiwan-based TSMC to make chips that outpaced Intel's technology. The world's consumers have been cutting back on eating meat since the early days of the pandemic. Nielsen IQ data showed that in 2022, U.S. shoppers cut back on beef purchases by more than 4 percent, while U.K. sales of beef roasts and steaks have tumbled. In Brazil, beef consumption was on its way to a record low in 2022. For 2023, the U.S. Department of Agriculture predicts roughly flat consumption worldwide. The U.S. DOA also thinks that Argentina will experience a drop of more than 2%, while the U.S. will sink by almost 5%. In the U.K., according to data compiled by farm advisor AHDB, beef purchases at grocers and restaurants have fallen 5.8% from a year earlier, with sales of roasting joints down 22%, while steak buying dropped about 19%. In Argentina, it's estimated that per capita beef consumption reached 47.2 kilograms in 2022, compared with a modern-day record of 68.7 in 2007. Meanwhile, data from the Rosario Board of Trade showed that consumption of chicken has grown to nearly 46 kilograms from roughly 18 two decades ago. Turkey warned its citizens on Saturday against possible Islamophobic, xenophobic and racist attacks in the U.S. and Europe after its Western allies cautioned their citizens in Turkey about possible terror attacks. The Turkish Foreign Ministry recommended its citizens to act calmly in the face of possible harassment and attacks and to stay away from areas where demonstrations may intensify. The ministry said that recent increases in anti-Islam and racist acts reflect the dangerous dimensions of religious intolerance and hatred in Europe. <laughs> A far-right anti-immigrant politician burned a Quran last week near the Turkish embassy in Stockholm during a protest, heightening tensions between Turkey and Sweden. Similar Quran burning acts in the Netherlands and Denmark also drew strong condemnation from Ankara. Several embassies in Ankara, including those of the United States, Germany, France and Italy, on Friday released security alerts for their citizens in Turkey that flagged possible retaliatory attacks by terrorists against places of worship. The Philippines Presidential Communications Office said on Sunday that Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos has approved a valued-added tax refund program for foreign tourists. The program will start in 2024 and aims to attract more visitors. According to the Philippines Department of Tourism, the country recorded 2.65 million international visitors last year who brought in an estimated $3.65 billion in revenue, exceeding its 2022 target of $1.5 million tourists. The government aims to boost visitor arrivals this year to 4.8 million tourists. 
The Philippines government collects a 12% VAT on goods consumed by foreign tourists within the Southeast Asian country. The plan is to allow foreigners to get a VAT refund on items they are taking out of the Philippines, similar to what many other countries offer. The Philippines Presidential Communications Office said Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos has also approved the launch of an online visa this year for Chinese, Indian, South Korean, and Japanese tourists. Time on my own. I have a lot of things. I thank your blessings with your heart. New Zealand's deadly flood emergency continued Sunday after a heavy rainfall hit the country's North Island, causing landslides, flash floods, and knocking out roads. Police said New Zealand's largest city of Auckland remained under a state of emergency after it experienced its wettest ever day last Friday. The ensuing floods killed three people while another person remains missing. Auckland Airport locked 249 millimeters of rain within the 24 hours that ended at 9 a.m. last Saturday. The recent rainstorm beat out the previous 1985 record of 161.8 millimeters. New Zealand's weather forecaster, Met Service, warned of more severe weather on Sunday and Monday for the North Island, including in Auckland, where severe thunderstorms were possible and intense rainfall could also cause surface and flash flooding. It added that climate change is causing episodes of heavy rainfall. Air New Zealand said that airlines international flights in and out of Auckland would resume from noon on Sunday, which had closed domestic and international operations last Friday. Protesters across the U.S. were holding marches and rallies last Saturday, one day after the release of a video showing the horrific police beating of Tyree Nichols in Memphis. Saturday's marches and rallies were held in Memphis, Boston, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Salt Lake City, Athens, Georgia, and Columbus, Ohio, among other cities. Along the West Coast, protesters marched in Portland, Oregon, and San Francisco, carrying signs that read, Justice for Tyree Nichols and Jail Killer Cops. The graphic video of police striking the black man, Tyra Nichols, who later died earlier this month, drew outrage from across the country. A video of the incident begins with a traffic stop arrest for what officers said was reckless driving and goes on to show officers beating Nichols with batons, kicking him and punching him. The encounter ends with Nichols slumped on the ground in handcuffs, leaning against a police cruiser unattended as officers milled about. Nichols was later hospitalized and died three days later. On January 10th, U.S. congressional Republicans and Asia policy experts created a panel named the House Select Committee on the strategic competition between the U.S. and the Chinese Communist Party to bring awareness to the CCP's influence on K-12 education as well as colleges in America through what are called Confucius Classrooms and Confucius Institutes. The chairman of the committee, Mike Gallagher, said they are projecting the CCP's preferred message in the United States. According to a National Association of Scholars report, an estimated 500 K-12 schools in the U.S. have had Confucius classrooms. Fox News reported Confucius Institute headquarters, Hanban, changed its name in July 2020 to the Center for Language Education and Cooperation. The center is part of the Chinese Ministry of Education. Senator Marsha Blackburn said their goal is to control what we see, hear, and think about China. Confucius Institutes in any form must be erased from U.S. society immediately. A Japanese welling operator, after struggling for years to promote its products amid protests from conversationalists, has found a new way to cultivate clientele and bolster sales. Well, meat vending machines. The Kujira store, an unmanned outlet that recently opened in the port town of Yokohama near Tokyo, houses three machines for well sashimi, well bacon, well skin, and well steak, as well as canned well meat. Prices range from 1,000 yen, around 7.7 US dollars, to 3,000 yen or 23 dollars. The outlet features white vending machines decorated with cartoon wells and is the third location to launch in the Japanese capital region. It opened last Tuesday after two others were introduced in Tokyo earlier this year as part of Kyoto Senpaku's new sales drive. Companies officials say sales at the two Tokyo outlets have been significantly higher than expected, keeping staff busy replenishing products. Kyoto Senpaku said the company hopes to set up vending machines at 100 locations nationwide in five years. 
Fun Day News will help you sharpen your English skills and keep you informed about international current events. If you want to know more about our other programs and keep learning about the world's most important topics in English, please click the link in the description below to join Fun Day for free. I'm Jolie, your host. I'll see you next time.